Today, I am going to go through the before starting engine checklist for uh, Cessna Skyhawk uh, 172. So I have explained loaded and when selecting the aircraft, I'll click on customize and I will make sure that start with engines running is unchecked because I want to start from a cold engine and then go through the before starting engine checklist. And after I select uh, an airport here, I'll click on customize and instead of starting on runway i will start on the ramp now it doesn't really matter if i'm the only person on the simulator but if you are connected to an online network it will matter uh, don't start on the runway but for this it doesn't really matter since i'm the only one okay i'll go ahead and say start flight i have the aircraft loaded let's uh, go down the before starting engines checklist the first checklist item is pre-flight inspection uh, checking the arrow documents, uh, checking the outside of the plane and all that. For this checklist, I'm going to assume that I have already done it because I'm going to focus on the passenger briefing for this checklist. The second item is passenger briefing. Now for passenger briefing, there is an acronym that we can use and that is the safety briefing. And this PDF that you are seeing is on the FAA safety website and I will link it from the video description. So in the safety acronym, the first one is S. So seat belts fastened for taxi takeoff and landing and shoulder harnesses fastened for takeoff and landing. So I will show the passenger how to use the seat belt. how to use the seat belt and if the shoulder harness is uh, installed then how to use it as well now here this is one continuous belt um, goes to the shoulder but i have been in aircrafts where the shoulder harness is separate so here i have a picture um, and this is the seat belt and there is a button here the shoulder harness comes and you are supposed to latch this on to the button so whatever is installed in the aircraft um, show the passengers how to use it and also to let them know that uh, seat belts and shoulder harnesses have to be in place latched in place for takeoff landing um, and taxi and also seat position adjusted and locked in place so on the in the aircraft the seat can move front and back and also be raised in height so just make sure that uh, you let the passengers know that all of that can be done and they make all the adjustments um, prior. The next item in the checklist is air vents. And here, if I go up, you will see the air vents right here in the Cessna 172. And uh, for the, if you are passengers in the back seat, there are air vents in the back uh, like so and uh, so show them where the air vents are and if these are adjustable like the airflow and also there uh, some planes have a like if i zoom in you see the cabin heat and cabin air controls so showing the passengers these and uh, you may not want the passengers to touch the panel so in that case you can let them know that hey let me know if you want to do anything with uh, with the cabin air and then you can make the adjustments uh, that's also a good idea. Uh, all environmental controls we just discussed and action in case of any passenger discomfort. So if the passenger feels uh, nauseous, then what should they do? Uh, if there is, uh, you know, a, a barf bag, a vomit bag in the aircraft somewhere, uh, then you can show them uh, or you can just ask them to let you know. Now, this is also a slightly gray area because the moment you mention this, some passengers who are not uh, who, who feel queasy, it can actually become a suggestion for that and uh, suggestion for them and it can make them feel uncomfortable. So whether to actually bring this up or not is up to you as the PIC, uh, but that's what uh, this um, checklist item means. The next one is fire extinguisher uh, location and operation. So some aircrafts, the fire extinguisher will be here. Um, the training aircraft that I was flying, fire extinguisher was kept in between the two seats. Uh, in other cases, the fire extinguisher might be in the back somewhere. Uh, so wherever it is located, just let the passengers know where it is and uh, how to um, unlatch it and use it. Right. So fire extinguisher. The next um, safety briefing item is E, which stands for exit doors and emergency and emergency survival kit. 
now showing the passengers how to operate the um, aircraft doors and uh, also let your passengers know that hey in case of an emergency um, when you exit the aircraft go back because the propeller is in the front it might still be hot it might still be running uh, won't be visible so letting passengers know to keep in mind that uh, you're supposed to go back is a good idea um, and also the location of where the survival kit is typically it will be in the back uh, baggage area somewhere so just letting passengers know where it is and what are the contents of that um, in, in a very brief description that's uh, that's a good one uh, next one is the T which is traffic letting passengers know that uh, if you see any traffic nearby just let let me know as the pilot traffic on the right traffic right in front or things like that uh, but also not to um, talk unnecessarily during the uh, critical phases of uh, flight uh, landing approach uh, takeoff taxi when the pilot really needs to focus on what's going on um, you can let them know when it is fine to talk like once you have reached the top of descent and you have leveled off then you can let your passengers know that okay now you can relax ask questions but do not ask any questions when i'm talking to atc or uh, or when i'm in the critical phases of flight uh, this is called the sterile cockpit passengers necessarily won't know what sterile means so just talking through um, about what it actually means is uh, will be necessary and the final uh, safety briefing item is your questions give the passengers a chance to ask questions uh, to get things clarified uh, so that they are not bothering you when you are trying to do something critical in the in the cockpit okay so that's the passenger briefing complete uh, then seats and seat belts um, adjust so that is my own seats and seat belts i'll make my um, adjustments now and then the brake test and set so let me push this in so i'm going to test these brakes that i can actually pump them and there is pressure in the brakes and also if the parking brake is not set then i will set it so that's brakes uh, test and set and then the next item is fuel selector valve on both so if i zoom in this is where the fuel selector valve is and check that it is on both that means the aircraft the engine is going to take fuel from both the left and the right wing tanks now sometimes after um after a previous student has uh, you know gone training in the aircraft they might leave the fuel selector in one or the other um, either because they were uh, you know checking an emergency procedure with their instructor or for whatever reason so just make sure that this is pointing to both okay let's turn it back to both all right the next checklist item is fuel shutoff valve check that it's in so here is the fuel shutoff valve when it's in that means it's not engaged so the engine will get fuel um, in a normal manner so if it is out that means the fuel is being shut off engine will not retrieve uh, not get any fuel make sure that this is pushed in then the next checklist item is circuit breakers all in so let me reset the view here okay so circuit breakers are right behind the yoke here so let me actually hide the yoke by pressing y okay so here are the circuit breakers just make sure that all of them are in if a circuit breaker is popped out then it might indicate an issue uh, then follow uh, you know your school's uh, procedure on what to do if a uh, if a circuit breaker is out but if everything is in then we are good then finally the electrical and avionic switch are off so here is the electrical oh i just flipped it on so off so here is the electrical make sure this is off and the avionics both of them are off so after all these checklist items are complete just declare checklist complete and then move on to the next checklist which is the starting engines okay so for this video this is it uh, in a future video i'll cover the starting engines checklist hope this was useful to you if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and um, share it with your friends and if you are not subscribed to the channel please do subscribe it helps me at no cost to you Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.